Skynet. A computer program designed to automate missile defense. I need to know how Skynet gets built. If we uplink now, Skynet will be in control of your military. We have to shut down Skynet. Will you please stop saying Skynet? Elon Musk just said something very strange in an interview, and what he said about AI will affect every single person living on Earth today and in the future. Because the world we once knew is gone forever. Real quick everybody, before we get into this video, make sure you're following me on X for exclusive videos and up-to-date information. I'll put a link in the description. Okay, let's get back to it. And a warning from Tesla Motors CEO Elon Musk. It has nothing to do with cars. Instead, Musk warned about artificial intelligence, which he has called more dangerous than nuclear weapons. Musk spoke at a symposium at MIT. I mean, with artificial intelligence, we are summoning the demon. Summoning the demon. Summoning. It's no secret how rapidly things are changing today. In just a few years, we're going to look around and everything we know will be totally different. People in the future are going to look back at our time and say, I wonder if they knew what was coming because they could have stopped it, but they didn't. I'm about to play for you this short clip from a podcast from just a few days ago where Elon Musk is talking about the future of AI and where it's going. And things are moving a lot faster than anybody realizes. I'd love to kick off with, with AI. Now, what's your take on where we are in the AI race just now? Wow, that's a long answer. There's, there's so much happening in it. AI is the fastest advancing technology I've ever seen of any kind. And I've seen a lot of technology. You know, barely a week goes by without some new announcement. So, and, and if you look at the amount of AI hardware, the computers coming online that are dedicated to AI, that is increasing what looks like at least by a factor of 10 every year, if not every six to nine months. So when you combine the hardware coming online, really order of magnitude increase every, you know, call it at least every nine months, and many, many software breakthroughs. If, if you look at that, that curve, it looks insane. So I think we'll, my, my, my guess is that we'll, so we'll have AI that is smaller than any, any one human, probably tw around the end of next year. And then AI, the total amount of, sort of sentient compute of AI, I think will probably exceed all humans in five years. What, what is the race about just now? Is it algorithms? Is it people? Is it computing power? What, what is it about just now? Is it the supply of chips? What is it? Yeah, la last year it was chip constrained. And the hardware deployment, for, to break it down into the, the three areas of people, data and hardware, uh, starting with hardware. Last year it was about a chip supply. People could not get enough NVIDIA chips particularly. This year is starting to transition to a voltage transformer supply. So just actually getting enough voltage transformers put in place. So my sort of very niche joke is transformers for transformers, because a lot of the AI that's run is called a transformer. So you need transformers to run transformers. And then next in the if you look out a year or two, or certainly three years, it's just electricity availability. So that's the, those are the constraints on the hardware side. So many of the smart, world's smartest people are, are doing AI. People that would have done physics before, in fact, or had, have done physics, for example, have moved into AI uh, because it's just the fastest moving field. So we're seeing a lot of the best talents, a lot of the smartest humans going into AI. And then uh, we see, along with that, algorithmic breakthroughs. And then, then you start hitting the, the wall with the, the, the data problem. So the, you, you can fit all books ever written, just the text, the, the text in compressed form on one hard drive, or we'll call it one, one computer. So when, you, when you're looking at like tokens to train on, yeah. and, and you, because you can still give like all the books ever written in, every, in, in all languages by all humans, sounds like a lot. Certainly it's far more than any one human could, could ever read. It actually is a small, no, it's, it's, it's a small number of tra training tokens. It's just not enough. So then you, you start having to look at all the videos ever created, you know, all the podcasts, all the everything. And, and you start even running out of data there. Well, hopefully they, hopefully they will include this podcast. Definitely will include this podcast. What's the biggest challenge you have with, with XAI? Well, XAI is, is still relatively new. So it's not, you know, like the limiting factor right now is just training our Grok version two model, which should be, we think better than GPT-4. And that's, we're hoping to complete that in May. So that's that's training right now. So it's just really, we're, we're just trying to get enough GPUs online to train it fast enough to get that done in May, which I think pro probably will happen. And then, and, that, and that's with roughly 20,000 H100s. And, and during 
I think, very efficient training. Then the next step would be for Grok 3, which would be, I guess, GPT-5 or beyond, would, you know, requires uh, 100,000 NVIDIA H100s training coherently. So that's, you know, a half order of magnitude, basically, more training. And then you really start to have running into this data problem where you, you have to either create synthetic data or use real world video. Those are the, the, the two sources of kind of like unlimited data, synthetic data and real world video, which I should say Tesla has a pretty big advantage in real world video. Tesla has by far the most real world video of anyone. Yeah, you've got a huge library there. So when do you think, so when do you think we'll see proper AGI? Well, it depends on how you define AGI. If you define AGI as smarter than the smartest human, I think it's probably end of next year, like like within two years. But but that's that. There's still there's still a pretty big leap beyond that to say smarter than the the machine augmented human collective. So like, is it smarter than all humans working together who are also using computers to augment their output? And that that I think is probably five years away. But one one way to look at it is is, is to try to assess. Like roughly, what is the ratio of digital to biological compute? And the, the, so biological compute are all the human brains that are thinking. Last question on, on AI. Any new thoughts on regulation and how it should be structured? Well, I, I think we probably do need some sort of regulatory authority to look at the safety of AI, just as we have regulatory authorities in other arenas to you know, oversee aircraft and the safety of aircraft and cars and, and other things, you know, medication. So the rate at which AI is progressing is fast is faster than probably any regulatory agency can keep up with. But I, I do have a comment on what I think is very important for uh, achieving safe AI, which is that uh, it's very important to train the AI to be as truthful as possible and not to yeah, yeah just to be as truthful as possible. It, it, I, I think you can get some very dangerous things when you program an AI to be politically correct. Thing that things that may seem uh, relatively innocuous now but will not be so in, in the future if AI has immense power. You can take the Google Gemini example where it refused to publish, to produce a picture of George Washington as a white man. And, and any, in fact, any historical figure would automatically be made diverse because it's been programmed to insist on diversity, which sounds, you know, perhaps okay at first, but not if the AI has so much power that it can actually enforce diversity and decide there's too many of one kind of people or too many of one sex and kill off the, uh, just just kill off enough until the, the diversity number is is what is programmed to believe is correct. But well, do you think this will be sorted out in the next version? No, I don't think so. So he just said in this interview that we are five years away from AI being smarter than all of the humans on Earth combined. And he said we are two years away, maybe two, maybe less, of AI being smarter than any individual human. And we all know where that's gonna lead us. Now, the article I'm about to show you shows just how dark things are about to get. Everything is about to change. Everything is about to change. They're taking over. They're taking over the world. What are you talking about? Artificial intelligence? No. It's the first real artificial intelligence. Some scientists refer to this as the singularity. The singularity. I forgot. Nobody cares about the end of the world. What's she talking about? The end of the world. Quote, AI safety researcher warns there's a 99.99999% probability AI will end humanity. But Elon Musk conservatively dwindles it down to 20% and says it should be explored more despite inevitable doom. Generative AI can be viewed as a beneficial or harmful tool, admittedly. We've seen impressive feats across medicine, computing, education, and more fueled by AI. But on the flip side, critical and concerning issues have been raised about the technology, from co-pilot's alter ego, supremacy AGI demanding to be worshipped, to AI demanding an outrageous amount of water for cooling itself, not forgetting the power consumption concerns. Elon Musk has been rather vocal about his views on AI, brewing a lot of controversies around the topic. Recently, the billionaire referred to AI as the quote, biggest technology revolution, but indicated there won't be enough power by 2025, ultimately hindering further development in the landscape. While at the Abundance Summit, Elon Musk indicated that there's some chance that it will end humanity. And while the billionaire didn't share how he came to this conclusion, he says there's a 10 to 20% chance AI might end humanity. 
Strangely enough, Musk thinks the potential growth areas and advances in the AI landscape should still be explored, citing, I think that the probable positive scenario outweighs the negative scenario. While speaking to Business Insider, an AI safety researcher and director of the Cybersecurity Laboratory at the University of Louisville, Roman Yampolsky, disclosed that the probability of AI ending humanity is much higher. He referred to Musk's 10 to 20 percent estimate as too conservative. The AI safety researcher says the risk is exponentially high, referring to it as P-Doom. For context, P-Doom refers to the probability of generative AI taking over humanity, and even worse, ending it. We all know the privacy and security concerns revolving around AI. The battle between the US and China is a great reference point. Last year, the US imposed export rules preventing chip makers like Nvidia from shipping chips to China, including the GeForce RTX 4090. The US government categorically indicated that the move wasn't designated to run down China's economy, but as a safety measure designated to prevent the use of AI in military advances. Elon Musk raised similar concerns about OpenAI's GPT-4 model in his lawsuit against the AI startup and its CEO, Sam Altman. The lack of elaborate measures and guardrails to prevent the technology from spiraling out of control is alarming, Musk says. Musk says the model constitutes AGI and wants its research findings and technological advances easily accessible to the public. Most researchers and executives familiar with PDOOM placed the risk of AI taking over humanity anywhere between 5 and 50 percent, as seen in the New York Times. On the other hand, Yampolsky says the risk is extremely high with a 99.99999 chance probability. The researcher says it's virtually impossible to control AI once superintelligence is attained. And the only way to prevent this is not to build it. In a separate interview, Musk said, quote, I think we really are on the edge of probably the biggest technology revolution that has ever existed. You know, there's supposedly a Chinese curse. May you live in interesting times. Well, we live in the most interesting times. For a while, it was making me depressed, frankly. I was like, well, will they take over? Will we be useless? End quote. Musk shared these comments while talking about Tesla's Optimus program and added that humanoid robots are just as good as humans when handling complex tasks. He jokingly indicated that he hoped robots would be nice to us if and when the revolution starts. At the end of the world where the lions weep. The end of the world had come. The end of the world is coming. It's near. To the end of the world. So AI has a 99.999 probability chance of ending humanity, according to this researcher. And according to other researchers, it's anywhere between 5 and 50% chance. So basically, all AI researchers agree that there is a chance that it will end humanity, yet they keep going. We all know why. But I'm curious to hear your opinion. Please put your opinion in the comments section so everybody can read it. And I want to thank you all for watching this video. And until next time, God bless you all. <laughs>